chapter 5 today. Mark chapter 5. Everybody knows what the Holy Spirit put on me for the year um, about faith. And that has just stuck with me, you know, ever since January 1 that we had to have faith. And I know the reason that God is saying that we need to have faith is because of the things that are coming and the things that we're going to face. Um, I will say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for us having one another. Uh, to be able to praise and continue to worship and study God's Word uh, and fulfill His will while we're here. Um, I believe Miss Amelia did the first half of this chapter last week, um, and I'm actually going to do the second half of this chapter this week. Um, so anyway, so basically that is, it's about a couple of different things. You know, being a minister, I get a lot of people who contact me from different parts of the United States and then here local as well when they've got family members that are sick they've got family members that have the COVID or they've had a family member that the doctors have told them that they've only got so long to live they've got stage 4 colon cancer they've got the COVID-19 whatever the case may be and first and foremost we've got to have faith yeah. um, but the second thing that this sermon is about today is we've got to believe we have to believe in order for God to be able to intercede in our lives and to intercede for the healing that we are requesting of Him. Uh, so I, I'm just going to get right to it today. Um, it's a fantastic scripture. Of course, y'all hear me say every week that all of God's Word is fantastic uh, scripture to me. Um, you know, when she did that, that, that message last week, um, there was a lady that had a, a blood issue for 12 years and 12 represents the 12 patriarchs of God's children the 12 tribes of Israel um, and and the thing that struck me was and, and of course we'll touch on the deep vein as I get on into this um, but anyway she touched he was going through the crowd and, and she touched his hymn that's all she had to do was touch his hymn and virtue literally left his body and she was healed and I have a lot of people say, well, I can't touch the hymn of Christ today. I said, well, I touch it every day. We can touch the hymn of Jesus Christ every day. See, because when He died on that cross, He rent the veil so that we can walk in unto the Holy of Holies. We don't have to be able to physically touch His hymn, folks, because He's dwelling within us. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ in the Word of God. And I always tell people, they do not believe me when I say that this Word can heal people of their afflictions today. That's how much power it is. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the living Word. So He's, he's making His way through the crowd uh, and she reaches up and touches His Him. And... Uh, the thing about it is, when you're a servant of the Lord, and I don't know if he, I'm sure that there's many of you that maybe have experienced this, and if you're in the ministry and you're a teacher, maybe you're just a really good soldier for God, and you're out there ministering to the world, and you're witnessing, and you're listening to people's problems, and you're you're praying for them. And when when I read that scripture again, it was talking about how how the his his power, some of his power, his essence left him in order to heal them. Well, to me, it is the same thing with somebody that serves the Lord. I mean, I know I go out into the world, and like I said, there's, you know, there's just because you don't see us every week on Tuesday, and you don't see us every week on Sunday, we are ministering, ministering every day. And man, I tell you what, you can sometimes it will just literally suck out your your uh, spiritual <laughs> juice out of you and just fatigue you and make you so tired. And uh, man, I tell you what, I've been struggling the last couple of days, and she knows that I've just barely got my legs under me today. And I'm like, man, what is going on with me? And uh, man, I'm just drained. And I, and and so that kind of hit home with me when I read that. 
And then, of course, I prayed the other day, and this might have something to do with it. I didn't tell her I went to see Uncle Bobby and Aunt Charlene. All y'all who know my Uncle Bobby, he's preached here several times. And uh, they know that my love and my passion is to serve God full time. And, of course, my wife's always quick to remind me, well, we're already doing it full time. Yes, I know. We are doing the full time hours of it, but my time is divided between a full-time business, being a grandfather, being a father, being a boss, uh, and, and, and being a minister of a church. I mean, you know, several different hats here, you know, that we're taking on and off. And uh, my, my aunt said something to me pretty profound, um, and she asked me if I had prayed this, and I said, no. And she said, she said, pray to God to do whatever it takes. And she said, that's very powerful. You better make sure that's what, that's what you really want. Mm -hmm. And I prayed. I prayed to God, whatever it takes to, fulfill, to fulfill the my love and passion for you to serve you full time. And uh, man, ever since then, I've just been like, just <laughs> I ain't hardly got no legs under me. I'm just sharing with y'all. I know I'm rambling. Um, but uh, she, she can tell you, I thought I was getting sick. I just can't hardly see straight. I can't hardly walk. And, and uh, I just feel like and it's like she just said this morning, it was funny that Miss Melinda shared that this morning. She said something big's coming, and I don't know what it is. And uh, I don't know if he's getting me down to my weakest point, and, and then and then something bigger's going to happen. I don't know because we don't know. God works in miraculous ways. That's right. um, <coughs> Mark two seventeen, and this kind of goes with um, what what our what our whatever Randall calls it that we do. This is our mission at our church. And, and, you know, Mark 2.17 says, uh, Jesus Christ said unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but I, or I'm not, yeah, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is a place where people can come and worship God and be healed Amen. of their afflictions. Hallelujah. And each and every time that you grace the doors of this church, you will be touching the hem of Jesus Christ because that is what we teach. There's not one thing that you're going through in your life today that you cannot be healed physically, spiritually, or mentally when you are walking with Jesus Christ. Amen. Absolutely nothing. Whether it be addiction, whether it be a bad marriage, whether it be a bad job, it doesn't matter what it is that we can touch the hymn of Jesus Christ today and He can make it happen. Yes. Yes. All He's got to do is speak it into being. All He's got to do is think it into being. But the thing about it is, what you're going to learn today, is, is the, you have to believe. That's right. You have to believe. And you have to have faith in God. And He will set several examples uh, on praying for somebody that is sick as we get down, down into this. Um, I'm going to read Mark 5.30 which she did this last week and I just covered it. And Jesus immediately knowing in Himself that virtue had gone out of Him turned Him about in the press and said who touched my clothes? God knows. He knew who touched His clothes. Mm -hmm. But she finally came forward trembling and crying and saying Lord I touched Your clothes. Please forgive me. And He said because you believed you are made whole. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Isaiah 53 5. I said that this word can heal us today. And 50, Isaiah 53 5 says, We are healed by his stripes. He took the beating, he took the stabbing, he had the crown of thorns on his head, and he hung from the cross on Calvary so that we could have forgiveness of sins and to be healed. Man. of any affliction that we have today. And that's, that's the reason a lot of people are not healed today. Uh, it's because they truly do not believe that God can do it when they go into it. Right. Um, and it's just like when uh, somebody, I, like I said, you go into a prayer, and if you're going to say, well, God ain't going to heal me no ways, but I'm going to go ahead and pray about it. That's not believing. That's, right. that's doubting. We have to believe that He is God we have to believe that Jesus Christ did die on that cross so that we may have forgiveness of sins and you must believe that God can heal you. Amen. There sure ain't nobody else that can heal you. That's true. 
Because even the, the best surgeons in the world, do you not think that God didn't give them the gift oh, yes. to be smart enough to do that and do what they do? Of course He did. At the end of the day, we give all praise and glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> also, when I go into praying, some you know, with a lot of people, and, they, and they, man, I'll tell you what, it is so hard to lose the people that we love. But if you really take a look around, this life is passing us by just like that. Yeah. It's so quick. And we will be reunited with them soon. You know, if things keep going the way they are, it's going to go soon. But besides that, life passes us by so fast. And when I was studying this, you know, a lot of people get upset. I mean, I've been to hospitals and prayed over people that are on their deathbed. And of course I'm going to pray for God. I'm going to pray for a miracle right then and there. That, that God would heal them and that they're going to walk out of that place. And then when it doesn't happen, people get upset and they're like, well, you prayed, uh, there ain't no God. You prayed to God, my loved one died. Folks, when it's our appointed time, it's our appointed time. When it is time for you to go home, Jesus Christ calls you to home, you're going home. If it is God's will that you be healed, then He will heal you. Amen. And I always say to people, you know, I said, you know what? I said, man can sit there and tell you that you only have six months to live. They can tell you that you can't be healed, that you only have a year to live. But God gets the final say. That's right. There is nothing impossible with God. Amen. But I was thinking about Big John. How many of y'all remember Big John? Okay. Young man that was coming to church here by himself. I mean, he'd come every week by himself. And uh, he was in a terrible car accident. He actually worked for me at the time. And I was thinking about his family when I was studying this. Uh, Jenny, his mama charity, Jenny's his grandmama. And uh, he laid up in that hospital bed. And me and Jerry went up there and we laid hands on him and we prayed for him. And God took him home. And it's so, we just, it's so hard for us to conceive the loss of a loved one today. But Ecclesiastes 12, 7 says, Then the dust returns unto the ground from whence it came, and the Spirit returns unto God who gave it. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 8 says, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, folks. That you never, ever die if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. And you know what I tell them? They say, well, God didn't heal my loved one. I said, you're wrong. Open your eyes. They have got the ultimate healing. Yes. They are in the beautiful, perfect spiritual body where Amen. you cannot die no more. You cannot age no more. You cannot be burnt no more. Perfect spiritual body. There are no more diseases. And God shall wipe away the tears from Amen. your eyes. Amen. The ultimate healing. I mean, do you think your loved one sitting up in heaven today worrying about what you're doing down here? Nope. No. They're in paradise, folks. And I don't say that to be ugly. It hurts some people's feelings. Were you saying my loved one? No. They're in paradise. They're not worried about what is going on on this earth. So just because they, they weren't healed in the physical where you could see it doesn't mean they did not get healed. Oh, that's right. If they were crippled, they're walking. If they were in a wheelchair, they're walking. If they had cancer, it's gone. That's right. If they were old, now they're young. <clears throat> Man, I'd much rather be where they are. Amen. But I know that God's got a lot of work left for me to do. We serve a loving, awesome God. Amen. And that's the most comforting thing as a Christian that believes in Jesus Christ is to know. And I look at it like this. When you close your eyes and you go to sleep at night, it's not really any difference to me that when you pass, that's like falling asleep, and guess what? You wake up and you're in the spiritual body in heaven with God. That's right. Lord, amen. You never actually die. Um, and I know it's a very scary thing for a lot of people, but when you know that, man, it makes it so much easier. All right, so let me see here. Uh, I do want to read the verse 34 of uh, the same chapter she did. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee whole. And man, even though this was talking about you know a, 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 a disease of healing again, thy faith will make you whole. These are the words of Jesus Christ. 
I'm not talking about just a, a disease to be healed of. I'm talking about when He gets you out of a bad situation. I'm talking about when He helps you to overcome an addiction. You can be made whole. All you have to do is reach out and touch the hem of Jesus Christ. Alright, let's pick it up in verse 36. Or 35. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogues a house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest the master any further? So basically, they've come up to Jesus Christ and, and, and have said that this, the, the ruler of the synagogue that his daughter was dead. Verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, and I want you to pay attention, be not afraid, only believe. Do you believe today? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is going to deliver you out of your affliction today? I know that we've got a lot of people in here with a lot of different ailments, including myself, but there is not one thing, not one thing that Jesus Christ cannot heal for you today. All you have to do is believe. Verse 37. He suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother um, of James. Now why did he only take them? Because they believed. They believed and they had faith. I told you he's going to teach you a very important lesson in this chapter. Verse 38. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. 39. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. Now I read that to my wife and she looked at me and she says, Well, wasn't she dead? I said, it's right there in red and white letters. It says Jesus says she was asleep. Yeah. And Jesus doesn't lie. And Jesus knows us, does He not? That's right. <laughs> I can't help on the deeper vein of this. He said that she was asleep. And I don't know if it dawned on anybody else when me did hers or whatever, and it didn't really dawn on me until I studied it again. The bride of Christ today is asleep. This word sleep in the Greek, it doesn't mean to be dead. It means to slumber. So many of God's children today are asleep. They are blinded to the truth of what is going on in this world today. Do you ever look and see some of the things that are happening in the world today and people look at it and they don't see anything wrong with it? Because they are blinded folks. They are asleep spiritually to the truth of God's Word. And they're not being taught that Word. And in Romans 11 and 8 it says, According as it is written, I have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. God blinds them on purpose. Some of them are blinded because of their own ignorance. Some of them are blinded because they've listened to false doctrines, false religion, and traditions of men, and never, ever opened up this beautiful, beautiful love letter that God has left me and you. But some of them are blinded Spiritually blinded because God did it. And I just think, why in the world would God intentionally blind His children? Because they can't handle the truth. They cannot handle the truth. And in God's Word, if they do it out of ignorance, then He does not count it as a sin because He will not judge them for it to be a sin. So when the Antichrist comes to this earth claiming to be Jesus Christ and millions of His children bow and knee to Him thinking that He's Jesus, God will not judge them to hell because He's the one that blinded them. See, God picks those that are strong. He picks those that love Him. You don't have to be charismatic to go out and do God's work today. But He does pick strong Christians are not weak. We are the strongest people in the world. 
Even though growing up I was always taught and portrayed to Christians as being weak. You know, turn the other cheek. And that doesn't mean that at all. If a bully walks up to you and hits you on the mouth, hit him right back in the mouth and knock him on his donkey. That's right. God, huh? I'll pray for him after I get done too. And that's why Christians have been betrayed weak because of the mistranslations of men and false doctrines and false traditions. We are the strongest people in the world. But there are some people that just cannot handle the truth. They don't want to know it. They don't want to see it. And they don't want to hear it. They want to keep living their lives, sticking their head in the sand, oblivious to what's going on in the world today. That's right. They think things are going to get better, but they're not. They're only going to get worse. Are you worried about it? No. I'm not. I'm going to keep praising God. I'm going to keep studying His Word. I'm going to keep taking care of my family. I'm going to keep doing the things that God expects me to do to serve Him with every minute and every breath that's left in my body. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. Until Jesus Christ returns to this earth and I say, come, sweet Jesus, come. It can't happen fast enough for me. But I know I've got work to do. We've all got a lot of work to do. Amen, brother. <clears throat> Let's see what the people did when he when he told them that they were asleep, that she was asleep. I, I'm, I'm going to back up just a second. I missed some scripture right here and I don't want to miss it. That word sleep again also is in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Because when Jesus comes back to this earth, we will be changed into the spiritual body. Yes. And we will not all be asleep spiritually because we will know full and well what is taking place. Come on. Matthew 7, 21, 23. A lot of times when I quote the Scripture, people think I'm just talking about people who are ungodly. They think that Scripture that Jesus is just talking to those that are lost. <laughs> Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Jesus Christ says, Many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. What did I just say? He that doeth the will of my Father. Verse 22, he says, Many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not done many wonderful works? Have we not cast out devils? And Jesus will look at them and say, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That is not just talking about those uh, who are not saved. It's not talking about just those who do not believe in God. It's talking about people that have sat in church all of their lives right. and bowed a knee to the Antichrist Satan thinking that he was Jesus. That's right. Man, that's a sad day for somebody that sat in a pew their entire life to be deceived by the Antichrist simply because they never picked up God's Word and read it. Verse 40. I'm going to read 39 again. And when he was come in and saith unto them, Why make you this ado? And we, the damsel is not dead. She sleepeth. Again, I can't help but say there's so many people asleep today. Amen. Verse 40. What did they do? And they laughed him to scorn. Amen. Do you think they laugh at him today? Have you ever been out in the world today and tried to talk to somebody about Jesus? And they snicker under their breath? There ain't no God. There ain't no Jesus. All of y'all believe in fairy tales. If this is a fairy tale, you're right, I believe it. Every, every word of it do I believe. They laughed at Him. Alright, verse 40. Uh, again. But, and they laughed at him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered into the, da into the damsel was lying. He took Peter, James, and he took the brother of James, and he took the family. He took the mother and the father. Why? Because they're the one that requested him to start with. The example that you need to understand here is what did he do with the rest? He made them leave. 
When you are praying for someone to be healed, if they are a non-believer or if they do not have faith that God can do the healing, they need to get out of the room. Amen. That is the powerful example that Jesus set forth right here. Get them out of the room. You don't want a non-believer in that room. You want people that know God is God. You want them to know that the Word of God can heal them in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If I'm not sure about somebody having unshakable faith to believe that God will heal, I will ask them to leave the room. Right. My wife often prays with me over people because I know she's my partner. We're one flesh. And I know that she has that unshakable faith that God will heal. But that is key, folks. You do not want a non-believer laying hands on somebody with you Amen. when you are praying for Jesus Christ to heal them. Amen. Verse 41. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kuma, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, rise. Now he was in Syria at this time, so he spoke in her language, common sense tells you, so that she would understand what he was coming out of his mouth. She wasn't speaking a bunch of gobbledygook. She understood what was being said. And Jesus Christ told her to arise. And that is what Jesus Christ is telling His children today. Come out of confusion. Come out of the sleep and slumber that you're in and wake up and arise. Yes. We've got a great battle ahead of us today and we have got to have our spiritual eyes open. We've got to have our spiritual discernment. We've got to have our gospel armor on today and go out into the world and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. <clears throat> and straightway the damsel rose and walked for she was of the age of 12 years old. There you go again. Talking about the children of the 12 tribes. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something uh, should be given her to eat. Can I get an amen? amen. 